Okay, everybody, welcome. It's uh, video 20. Uh, working on rebuilding the brackets. Okay, let's get started. So I've laid out the new bracketry, test fit everything. So getting the distances set up correct for the... Uh, what you gotta do is you gotta get the gap for this distance for here. For right here. So, yeah, I'm mucking around with that. So you can see I got some brackets built. Got these drilled. Got, uh, they're all completely done. And then got the, these brackets all ground out. And, uh, yeah, I was just putting together a template, which I put over here. To lay out the pieces on and then you can just it's just template you set them in weld them on tack them and then pull them off to do the final weld and then i set this side up as well and i did the test fit first day of heavy construction we got uh that's all looking pretty good those brackets are heavy duty and you can see the way the final product looks with the two uh supports there they're going to be super strong once welded on not going anywhere okay i've started assembling the brackets and i just wanted to show you how i'm just making sure my distances all line up correctly um, so what i've got is a string here tied to the sprocket and runs down to the end and then uh, i put this vertical one on just to make sure that i was staying down in the center of the tire as uh, as it was coming down there yeah so, I, so that way I know I'm, I'm vertical in the center of the tire for my string is up top. Yeah, and then when you look down the line, you can see the string is touching the center of the tire at the far point. But at the closer point, what you're looking for is to see that it's right in the top of the tire. And if, if my distances were not equal to the center of the drive cog, then this wheel would not be vertically in the middle of the tire. It would be... You know, in or out and then I know that I have to adjust my brackets to add an extra quarter inch or whatever right to make sure it fits but that's all looking really good so I should be able to just build the brackets the way they are I hope it's good looks pretty good I'm not gonna go and bother trying to uh, find the center of the vehicle and then do a vertical drop or find the vehicle and then like measure a distance from here and do one at the front as long as it's close for what little I'm gonna do with this machine and when you look down the line it looks pretty close it's not maybe towed in a little bit but not by much if it is hard to say curves of the body you can't can't really tell like I said I'd have to actually take a frame measurement and run a, a stick out drop a drop line, do it on both sides and at the front and the back, and then measure the distance away, equal distances front and back on each side. And then that's where you'd want your, uh, that would be making sure your track was dead straight. But uh, I'm eyeball close, so I'm happy with that. Okay, gonna get back to work, uh, welding up the brackets now. And uh, yeah, got a few of them put together and uh, tacked up ready to go and I got started on the new uh, front uh, idler holder <laughs> so this here piece of uh, steel fits inside this three inch like so so this will be the slider for the uh, front wheel and since I'm going to be using a, sl a slide all the way across it'll be very little give in the track so the most amount of tensioning you'll need to do with the track is couple inches because when you move the front wheel out an inch you're actually moving top and bottom so one inch of travel here is a is two inches of travel or two inches of slack in the track so I don't expect to have to move this more than maybe uh, two or three inches max to tighten up the track really tight and then I'm, I'm going to add some holes in the side <clears throat> and these pins are going to go through like this um, just with the amount of torque that was on that uh, front wheel, it bent the front bracket when I tried to break the one side. And right now, the way this slider was working was there's a piece of three-quarter inch 
uh, rod, which is right here. And this was holding this, this adjuster back with just a nut. And once I put a couple thousand pounds of force on that, or even a thousand pounds of force, I, I don't want to bend it or, or bind it up in the thread. So what I'm going to do is use this to, to tighten it. And then once the holes are there, then I stick the pin in, in the closest hole and then back the nut off and just lock it so it doesn't move. This way, the weight is on the pin and not on the, uh, the bolt. Anyways, back to work. Okay, got all the uh, walking beams welded up, built. And I've started mocking it up on this side. Got the, uh, the three inch wide brackets on and just tacked. And uh, made it all out, connected it all up. Just see what it looks like. So, looking good. I was just connecting up the, uh, the new bracket on the front here and figuring out how to get this all sized up. So it looks like now with this being a three inch wide piece of steel, this two inch will be the right size. And then, uh, yeah, this will be welded on right like that. And that will give us just the right fit. The tire will be dead center. I'm gonna use these, uh, the ones I bought, those, those uh, pin things from the hydraulic cylinders. Uh, because I screwed up two of the uh, walking beam mounts, therefore I was short two. Had to use them for the walking beams. But luckily I had those and they're a little heavier. Put a lot of weld on it and I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, that's video 20, guys. And uh, have yourselves a good week and weekend. And we'll see everybody next week.